Hello everyone, welcome back to Kiran's English Hub. So we are continuing with the summaries of 7th class English and so far 7 units are completed and all the 7 units videos are already uploaded in the YouTube channel, in my YouTube channel and in the 7th class English playlist. So in this video I will be teaching you the last unit in reading A which is titled as Snakes in India. So this is another interesting topic where we uh, see about and read about some of the uh, you know nature and some of the natural animals. Okay, so here snakes in India. So before getting into the text, we have got a pre-reading that is a poem. So garden snake. So you all know this garden snake, right? So which is in green color. So those children who do not uh know about this snake you can just uh, you know see the picture here this garden snake it is not at all harmful it just lives on some insects and uh, some bugs and all and uh, it, it doesn't bite first of all it doesn't attack humans and it is not at all dangerous okay it is just like you know some of the pets in our homes but we cannot uh you know keep them in our homes okay so here we have got a poem I saw a snake and ran away. Some snakes are dangerous, they say. So here, the speaker of this poem is telling that the speaker ran away looking at a snake. And uh, people usually say that snakes are very much dangerous. So that's why the speaker ran away. But mother says that kind is good and eats up insects for his food. So uh, when the speaker, okay, so it might be the child. So when the child went to his mother and uh, told his mother that he had seen a snake and all. So his mother told him that it is a good snake. It doesn't harm people and it eats up insects for its food. So it doesn't uh, like kill rats or frogs and all. It only lives on some insects. So when we when he wriggles in grass, I'll stand aside and watch his pass and tell myself there is no mistake it's just a harmless garden snake so when the snake usually wiggles wiggles in the sense when it moves in the grass uh, you know the uh, you know the speaker of this poem the child uh, later he learned that it is not at all harmful and when this type of snake uh, usually moves in the garden when it is in the garden usually uh, the child uh, you know just moves beside it he just stands beside it and he tells himself that there is no mistake and this is just, uh, you know, an harmless uh, snake. Okay. Next one here. We have got some questions here. Where do you normally find snakes? Usually we find snakes in abundant places. Like wherever there is so much of grass, like woods, in the rocks. Okay. Where the human usually do not go. Next the names of the snakes you know okay we know many snakes like uh, you know um, cobras king cobras and all right so those who know much more uh, rattlesnakes okay so if you know any other snake names you can just mention them here next in what ways snakes are useful so there are usually you know not many ways in which snakes are useful like you know the snakes usually they eat uh, usually they are uh, found in the uh, you know agricultural fields where they eat some insects they eat uh, this one uh, rats okay rats usually destroy the crop of the farmers so these snakes they just eat up those frogs and all okay so only in this way snakes are useful to the nature so they mostly eat insects and also rats we have got a oral discourse here talk on so talk about your reaction when you see a snake so uh, this is an uh, interesting talk here this is an interesting discourse okay so like you guys can speak in your class uh, if your teacher allows you so just talk about your reactions when you see a snake so imagine that you're going to the school you're walking towards the school immediately you, you saw a snake in front of you okay so what would be your reactions after looking at it? Okay, so you have to speak about that. Okay, fine. So here we have uh, the text reading A, snakes in India. 
so in this lesson we are going to learn you are going to learn about uh, uh, you know the snakes the poisonous snakes about the poisonous snakes about uh, a story of a farmer okay who was bitten by a snake and also about the deaths that are being uh, you know too much in india because of the snake bites okay so let us get into the paragraph here snakes in india what are the most dangerous animals on the indian subcontinent so here we are learning about only indian subcontinent here especially okay because uh, in indian subcontinent snakes are found too many okay so other than uh, these foreign countries in india these snakes are too many okay so which are the most dangerous animals in indian subcontinent that is the question here they are not lions tigers or wolves but poisonous snakes what are the most dangerous animals they are lions are not the most dangerous animals not tigers not even wolves but poisonous snakes they attack far more frequently than the people suspect so usually people do not know the skills of the snakes like one one snake has its own uh, type of body structure and its own type of skill okay the uh, uh, the skill which they usually get by birth okay some snakes go to the prey and eat it some snakes you know just uh, you know like lay uh, like far uh, uh, the distance of in the distance of like 1 meter 2 meter and they attack from there okay so there are many different and various types of killing from the snakes so people usually do not suspect the danger that is there from the snakes over 20000 humans are bitten by venomous snakes in india each year so according to the rough calculations nearly 20000 people are being dead every year in india because of the snake bites okay next one unfortunately the death rate from the snake bites is high largely because of the widespread ignorance and about uh, ignorance about snakes and snake bite prevention so uh, the reason behind this uh, number of deaths is that most of the people in india they have ignorance okay so people do not immediately go to the hospitals people do not uh, immediately take the medication for the snake bites they uh, depend on some of the you know local uh, ayurvedic practitioners who usually perform some type of uh, pain killing so uh, you know uh, performances on the body they give some type of uh, uh, you know medicine which is from the leaves and all that is only for like temporary nourishment that's it but the poison inside doesn't get killed unless uh, a proper anti venom is given okay so because of this ignorance and because of uh, the ignorance about the snake bite prevention many people are being dead in india okay also proper medical treatment is often delayed or unobtainable so usually you know treatment is being denied or treatment is unobtainable like people uh, usually delay the proper medication like scientific medication and also there are many people who do not usually get the medical treatment okay since uh, you know snake bites usually happen in the villages which are in the rural areas so those people cannot travel to the hospitals and before they could go to the hospitals they usually die these type of uh, you know unobtainable things usually happen so according to an estimate made by the world health organization about 15000 deaths from the snake bites occur annually in india how many 15000 deaths from snake bites occur annually that means yearly in india this is the report given by world health organization okay previously we have this number here which is a rough number but world health organization uh, finally gave 15000 uh, number of deaths in india which usually occur uh, um, annually so nearly half of the whole total of such deaths so 15000 is the half of the deaths that happen from the snake bites around the world so that means like imagine that there are totally 30000 deaths over uh, you know over the globe okay because of the snake bites and in the 30000 15000 deaths are completely from india so like it is like half of the 
people are being dead in India because of the snake bites. Okay, next one. Even for those who survive, it is a dreadful experience, usually resulting in days or weeks of agony. So, uh, some most of the people die because of the snake bites, because of several reasons. And the people who survive, who survive the snake bites also, um, you know, it is very difficult for them. Like, it is very dreadful experience. Okay, it is like deadly. Because, uh, you know, sometimes the place where the snake has bitten is... Uh, you know too painful and sometimes the snake you know just uh, the poison gets into the nerves of the person and uh, there it creates so much of pain oh, in whole body people usually get some warm things uh, giddiness uh, sensation loss and all okay so because of these snake bites there are many uh, you know effects which usually happen on the body and also Agony, agony in the sense, you know, like the world of pain. So, which after the snake bite, if the people uh, recover or if the people survive also, for so many days they have to um, undergo this type of pain, too much pain. Okay. So, take what happened to Tangal Kamal on a rainy evening in August 1948 or uh, 1981. So, here we are going to read about uh, this man, Tangal Kamal who is, uh, you know, a farmer usually. So, Kamal is a 25 years old farmer living near Goregon, a suburb of Mumbai, was working barefoot in his fields when he suddenly felt a sharp sting on his right foot. So, this man, uh, aging 25 years old, is working in a uh, field, okay, near Goregon, which is like the outskirts of Mumbai. So, there, even he was working in his field, he suddenly felt that there is something... Uh, you know sharp sting on his foot something has bitten him okay he just sensed that something has poked him on his uh, feet okay so Kamal exclaimed uh, examined his foot and saw two tiny marks near the ankle convinced it was a snake bite he hastily tied a rope just above his knee and called out to a relative walking nearby who immediately took him by a taxi to a local dispensary so local doctor's dispensary so you know immediately examined the place where uh, he sensed that something has poked him so he saw two tiny dots okay so when remember if the snake bites remember you will have uh, if it is not poisonous snake you will have the uh, you know shape like the biting shape of v shape okay from the top to bottom okay like reverse v and uh, if it is a poisonous snake, remember, you will get two dots on your, uh, you know, foot or your hand, wherever the snake bites. Okay, so the two dots means the two stings, the poisonous stings will be there, right, in the mouth of the snake. So the two stings, they release uh, poison into your body by going into your skin. Okay, so that's why there will be two dots on your body where the snake bites. So immediately this Kamal, he examined that. And he removed, uh, you know, he took one rope and immediately tied uh, on his knee. Okay, why, what is the reason of, uh, for tying the, uh, you know, tying the knot above the knee? The reason is, uh, you know, the snake has bitten on the foot. So, usually what happens is, uh, you know, from the nerves, the poison goes towards brain or towards heart. And it just uh, disturbs all the, uh, you know, functioning of the body. So, he doesn't want the poison to, uh, you know, come over his uh, feet and uh, to his mind. So, that's why he immediately, uh, you know, stopped the blood circulation by tying the rope to his knee. Okay, so that is the reason. So, immediately he called his friend who is just nearby and that friend took him to local doctor's dispensary. Remember, he took him to local doctor's dispensary. Okay. So, unfortunately, the doctor was not a fully qualified allopathic um, practitioner and did not know about anti-venom serum, so which is anti-snake venom, or how to administer it. He gave Kamal a pain-killing injection and antibiotic tablets. He told him to rest at home until the pain subsides. So, the doctor, the local doctor, like, you know, it can be like RMP or any other local person who usually takes care of the people for small small health issues okay 
so when kamal was being taken to that person that uh, local doctor what he did was you know he just gave an antibiotic tablet and uh, i just told him that this is just pain only nothing is going to happen you just go and take rest uh, so the pain will immediately uh, you know uh, go away so you just go and take rest at home and the thing is that he is not a fully qualified doctor okay so the doctors usually who treat the uh, you know patients who have this type of snake bitings and all what they do is they give anti venom uh, serum okay which is like anti venom uh, you know injection to the body okay which usually kills the poison okay so he doesn't have the local doctor doesn't have this type of treatment he just gave an antibiotic tablet and told this man to take rest okay but during the next few hours kamal felt increasingly giddy and vomited continuously continually so what happened is i you know kamal went to his home and he was taking rest so when he was taking rest uh, you know the hours are just passing by so he started to feel too giddy okay so giddy in the sense you know no just losing some consciousness and all and also he started to vomit continually so his right foot and lower leg swelled alarmingly and the pain was unbearable kamal's relatives rushed him to a large public hospital in central mumbai so when kamal was taking rest so all these things happened so immediately uh you know his lower leg also his lower leg also started to swell because he tied the rope uh, above his knee right so all the blood circulation uh, you know was just in his leg only so it is not circulating to the above body so it started to become uh, you know too heavy and it started to swell so and the pain also was becoming too much okay so because the poison is being spread uh, you know to the above parts slowly so immediately all his relatives you know he took him they took him to uh, the large public hospital in central mumbai so by then it was more than 5 hours since kamal had been bitten and blood had begun to ooze from the snake bite marks okay so by the time they had taken him to the uh, you know central mumbai hospital uh, it was it had been 5 hours okay so since it had been 5 hours so the blood from his uh two snake bite marks started to come out okay was in the sense to it started to come out so his gums were also bleeding and a soft thin tube put through kamal's nose into his stomach uh, revealed a large amount of bread fearing that it might already be too late the doctor gave kamal an injection of anti venin and began an emergency blood transfusion so what happened was the blood started to uh you know come out from his uh, snake bite marks and his gums okay you know the gums right in the mouth the teeth gums okay they also started to bleed these are all the symptoms that usually people get like it depends on the snake's venom so he started to uh, you know get the gums bleeding and also there is a tube put through his nose okay there is a tube okay there is tube kind of thing which is put into the nose of kamal so even there is large amount of blood coming out of the tube so doctor thought that it is already too late and he immediately gave the injection of anti venin and uh, his doctor also started the blood transfusion okay that means this like cleaning all the blood in his body and uh, uh, you know refilling the body with the new blood okay just like uh, you know emptying the water tank and filling in the water tank with the fresh water okay so just removing all the blood from his body the poison blood and uh, filling his body with the new blood so that is called as blood transfusion okay so over the next 3 days kamal was given 15 such transfusions as well as a uh, a repeat shot of anti venin so you know the next 3 days kamal was in hospital only and uh, during these 3 days totally 15 such blood transfusions are given like it was almost like 15 times uh you know the blood from his body was completely cleaned and the new blood is filled into his body okay and also a repetition of the anti venin shots are given continuously this anti venin injections are given so it was only after the fifth day that he was declared out of danger and about a fortnight he was finally discharged from the hospital so after five days kamal was declared that he was out of danger and finally he was discharged from the hospital 
so here we can see how dangerous that could be if we do not take proper medication in the proper time so only about 50 of the more than 200 uh, species of snakes in india are venomous so how many are poisonous only 50 snakes out of 200 snakes are venomous in india so first thing is we should not get terrified because we do not know which type of snakes or which type of snake has bitten us in that situation we do not examine the snake also right so you can see that many people in the villages if they get bitten by the snake they kill the snake and they snake the take the snake along with them to the hospital to show the doctors that so and so particular snake has bitten me so the doctors can immediately uh, you know start the treatment um, because uh, they know which type of poison in his body okay so usually this type of news is uh, you know from the villages in the cities usually if any snake bites they do not know they do not even kill that they just get fear okay so that's why here uh, don't get fear first of all if you are bitten by a snake so only 50 out of 200 snakes are venomous venomous in the sense they are uh, they have poison okay of these only four that may that are results viper soft scaled viper indian cobra and common crate are really dangerous okay so among these 50 so 50 out of 200 are venomous and among these 50 again only four are really dangerous really dangerous in the sense deadly like there are chances of dying if these four snakes usually bite like any one of these four snakes bites you okay they are found across the country from desert to fertile plains while all the four are most common in rural india indian cobras and common crates can be found in and around any human dwelling posing danger even in the suburbs of major cities like mumbai kolkata and delhi so first of all these four snakes are common like uh, you know everywhere in india mostly and also another important thing is that uh, common crates and in indian cobras uh, you know they can be even found uh, nearby the human dwelling human dwelling in the sense nearby the human uh, population and also um, near the suburbs suburbs in the sense outskirts of major cities also in the, uh, nearby the outskirts of major cities also indian cobras and common crates are being found so these results viper soft scale viper mostly are uh, in the forest um, type areas where there is no human population and all okay so of the death uh, dealing quartet the results viper is found from the paddy fields and river valleys of north india to the densely forested hills of tamil nadu kerala karnataka in the south so from north to the south everywhere nearby uh, the paddy fields or nearby the river valleys this results viper is found so look at this one here actually it is being uh, uh, beaten by some people you can see some blood marks on it so the thing is this results viper is too small okay it doesn't grow too long okay it doesn't grow too long just like other cobras uh, it grows only a like a draft person and uh, it grows thick okay it becomes fat okay so it is not too long and it is not too thin it is little bit fat and also short but the uh, but its um, uh, poison is too dangerous it is deadly somewhat okay so tan or brownish thick bodied so here you can see tan or brownish brownish body thick bodied that means it is a little bit fat and reaching a length of one meter so not more than one meter so it cannot grow uh, you know it doesn't grow too long it has long mobile fangs okay the fangs are long and also mobile fangs in the sense the two uh, you know the teeth like things will be there right which have a poison that are called as fangs okay so those two fangs inject a large amount of venom venom in the sense poison making it even more dangerous than the indian cobra so what russell swiper does is it doesn't move too fast it doesn't uh, have very long body but when it bites someone it releases a large amount of venom that means so much of poison is uh, you know just uh, usually 
left into the body of the person whom it bites whom it uh, bites okay so that's why it is too dangerous okay it is dangerous more dangerous than uh, indian cobra also so here we have some other pictures of uh, monocle cobra and spectacle cobra so here you can see the indian cobra are relative of some killer snakes of asia africa and australia is readily recognized by the spectacle the picture on the right this one and the monocle picture on the left marks on its back however the black cobra has no distinguished marks so this cobras they usually have this type of uh, shape okay so you can see that this is a type of like you know like it just expands the skin which is over its head when it is about to attack and when it expands its skin when it is about to attack this type of spectacle cobra they have uh, you know this type of uh, two dots and uh, like v shape link which connects them and for monocle cobra it uh, you know it has only one dot on its head okay that is also on the back side okay and uh, the black cobra it has no marks okay as you can see here the back uh, you know there is usually it is only front side is given but the back side there is no type of mark this type of marks like one two dots type of marks are not there for the um, black cobra okay so just looking at it don't just imagine that it is not black cobra since it doesn't have this type of marks okay black black cobra it doesn't have this type of marks at all okay so uh, you should know the differences between uh, this type of snakes at least okay about one and a half to two meters long the cobra spends much of its time underground or beneath dead logs or stones feeding mainly on frogs and rats so it is almost like one and a half to two meters long okay it doesn't grow more than that not more than two meters only in rare cases it grows more than two meters okay so it usually lives in underground or beneath the dead logs or stones and uh, it mainly eats frogs and rats the cobra's bite is shallow and delivers a smaller dose of venom but the venom is three times as toxic as that of the russell's viper so when this type of cobra bites you you won't feel too much pain of course you, do, you won't feel too much pain but uh, and also it releases only small dose small dose of venom whereas russell's viper it, it releases large dose of venom but here cobra it releases only small dose of venom but that small dose of venom is three times toxic that means it is three times danger uh, than that of the russell's viper okay so you have to understand that russell's viper is a little bit safer than the cobra okay so even more toxic is the venom of the secretive and timid common crate uh, one to one one to one and a half meters long in length it is found throughout india the common crate is usually uh, glistening bluish black with thin often uh, distinct white cross bands so usually this is okay usually a secret snake i too didn't see this type of snake i don't know it i haven't seen it in my life so far so this is the dangerous most dangerous snake uh, among all these four okay so the thing is uh, it is very secretive it doesn't usually come out to, into the public okay mostly it uh, it almost hides itself somewhere and it is one to one and a half meters length usually found all over india and uh, it is in bluish little bit black color with thin and often distinct white cross bands okay as you can see here it has some like you know design shape of uh, like white or yellow color on its skin so that type of body uh, is there for crate so contrary to what many people believe most snakes are timid nocturnal creatures feeding mostly on rats mice frogs toads lizards or birds they attack human only when actually stepped upon or provoked in some way so usually many people believe that uh, uh, snakes are uh, you know timid uh, non uh, nocturnal nocturnal 
uh, creatures mostly feeding uh, on rats mice frogs and toads and all so uh, apart from whatever the people know these are the things that usually happen to the snakes okay so they also do not usually attack human beings okay only if you step on uh, you know step on it or if you try to do some harm to it or if you just try to involve in its matters then it just tries to attack you to defend itself that's it okay so precautions such as wearing shoes and uh, long trousers when walking through high grass and undergrowth uh, will lessen the risk of being bitten for most snake bites in india occur as people walk barefoot carry a lantern or torch when you venture out at night so if you don't want to be uh, you know bitten by a snake remember you wear uh, shoes shoes and also wear trousers when you're walking in grassy area usually uh, in the field when farmers usually go into the field uh, farmers have to follow this but in india farmers do not wear these two shoes and uh, pants and all when they go into the field so that's why uh, there are so many deaths okay so and also carry a lantern okay lantern in the sense lamp or light when you venture venture in the sense uh, when you just walk or when you roam during the night time anywhere remember you carry something something like as a light or mobile torch or any type of lamp or candle okay beat the ground ahead with a long stick as you walk snakes will perceive the vibrations and slither away so for example if you are <clears throat> walking in a empty space or in a grassy way uh, remember you just uh, try to make some noise when you're walking in that lonely area imagine that if you <clears throat> feel that there are some snakes in the area where you're walking in the grassy field and all remember you just make some noise so uh, you know the snakes will just sense that vibrations and they will just go aside okay they will just move away from that way so the snakes move around uh, as long as they have rats to feed on so the thing is this uh, as long as there are rats in your house or around your house or nearby your house the snakes will be always there hence keep your home and its surroundings rat free so this is a suggestion for us so as long as there are rats the snakes will be around there around that uh, you know area only so that's why see that there are no rats in your house and your house must be rat free so one should be alert during the monsoon season when snakes are most active during the monsoon season that is during the rainy season okay so like that is the starting of the raining season in that season these mo- snakes are most active because uh, until then they will be in undergrounds and in some holes and all uh, without uh, much food and all during that time before that time that is usually summer in india and at that time snakes don't get much food and as soon as the rain starts that is monsoon season you know all the insects all the frogs rats that are in the holes everywhere they will be filled with water and all those creatures will come outside onto the earth so that is the time for the snakes to come out of their holes and eat all these insects frogs and all so during that time the snakes will be very much active and also healthy so that's why be very careful in the monsoon season when you go out and uh, that is it for this video and we have got a glossary here ignorance a lack of knowledge or information about something convinced completely sure about giddy feeling that everything is moving and that you are going to fall unbearable too painful annoyingly unpleasant reasonable acceptable toxic containing poison or poisonous it can be poisonous nocturnal active only during the night okay so snakes usually are active during the night time only because during the night time it is little bit cool and uh, during the night time they don't get much vibrations that means much sounds from the outside so that is the free time for the snakes to roam here and there so usually uh, night times are the best times for the snakes to travel so that's why be very careful not only the devils but also snakes also roam during the night time okay children so this is it for this video don't get fear that i said ghosts devils okay no devils are there so in unitite 
uh, I will be teaching you reading B, uh, which is a poem and it is titled as Trees. So that will be in our next video. So till unit 7, the videos are already over. So you just go through them through my playlist and you will find all those videos there. And before leaving the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon. When I upload the next video, you will be getting the notification. Okay, students. So I'll be ending the video. So take care. God bless you.